Guys, I was on ESPN before I came over here today. I was talking with George, and the topic came up of Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. And George poses it to me. Hey, chill, you know, how, how excited are you for this? Like, man, very. I'm very excited for it. Everybody is that, right? There's something special. It is the most basic law of economics supply and demand. There's no supply of Nick Diaz. Like, there's no part of me that wants to put this fight down. I want to understand on a deeper level, right? I, I don't want to just see the walkouts and the interviews and Nick's there and the mean mugging and the whole bit. I want to also know what does this mean? Does Nick want three fights, by example? Does he want five fights? Does he want two fights? Is this possibly a one and done? Is this just a competition? Is he going through his midlife crisis? It's a real thing. Could be. I don't know that I need the same answer for Robbie. Robbie's always up for a fist fight. Nothing's new here. I don't know that Robbie ever says no when he's feeling healthy to anyone. I've never heard that he does. So everything's in line for Lawler. I got to know a Nick. For five years, nobody offered whatever it was Nick uniquely is looking for. And we can't guess. We can't just put him, ourselves in his shoes. He marches to the beat of his own drum. So what is it that Lawler offers? What is this about this opportunity? Not that it's a main event. He was going to be main event anyway. It's not the weight class of 170. He could come back to 170. His previous fight was at 185 with Anderson. He could stay there too. He gave hints on social media that he was going to go all the way down to 155. Whatever. All works. No conflict. So what is it with Lawler? I'm still stuck at that. And it's not just that it's a big fight. Anything Nick does is going to be a big fight, right? They're all going to be home runs. But they're not all going to be grand slams. Nick versus Masvidal, you're talking about a grand slam. But that's not the fight that we have. Nick versus Chimaev, possible miss. In all fairness, possible miss. One guy that's been out for five years, another guy that's whipped three men and hadn't been in there a total of five minutes. Possible miss. What does this fight offer? <laughs> what is this fight for? Why are we going out and doing this? I trust that once that question is answered, it's going to be very simple. We don't need a, an in-depth psychological review here. We just need an answer. That's all. Is it about competition? Is it about getting healthy? Is it about staying in shape? Remember, BJ Penn was sticking around for a while, but BJ was telling people, I'm getting distracted when I'm not in MMA. Keep me in this. Great. We get it. We know the answer. Very simple. Very straightforward. Wasn't anything mind-blowing. I don't suggest for you that this one needs to be or that the answer is. I'm still stuck. If this is a personal grudge, what in the hell took you two boys 17 years to figure it out? Why has Robbie never called for Nick and Nick has never called for Robbie? So don't try to sell me on some kind of, of personal grudge. When it add up, if this is about rankings and, and, and contendership. I got my attention. I'm listening. I don't care what Robbie Lawler's ranked. Want to know where to find it? Don't know if he even is. He's a former world champion. It matters. So if that's the journey that Nick is on, I'd love to hear. But it's still one of these things where until that question gets answered, and a few of these are, are, are floating out there. A few of these things that are just tough to make sense of, particularly at 170 pounds. Where is Leon going to go? What do you do with Gilbert Burns? What happens to Wonders Boy stock? What is Masvidal going to do next? Is Covington fighting Usman? What is the delay on that announcement, by the way? Colby says they're fighting. Usman doesn't disagree. Dana says we want to do it. Why is that not signed? But there's some kind of an answer, right? Something is holding those things up. I remember the first time I heard that Colby was going to fight Kamara was in November of last year. And as soon as we got off of that, it was going to be Colby versus Masvidal. They were even going to do the ultimate fighter. Like, just something's happening there. Something's happening at 170. We know that Chemayev's coming back. That's going to be in meaningful fashion. He's got to get one out of the way. He's got to show that everything's behind him, right? Everything that cost him in the last eight, 10 months is all behind him. He's now switched management teams. What does that mean, if anything? Right? He just got to, he just got to do one. He's got to come out and show and do something. Chandler apparently was called out. By Islam. 
Now, I watched Islam's post-fight speech twice because I was heard that Chandler was called out. It simply did not happen. I was even told that RDA was called out. I rewound that thing a third time. That simply did not happen. At least not that my ears picked up. Well, then I was told, no, 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 Chandler, you're missing it. It was backstage. After he left the octagon, he went backstage. Chandler was working that night. He was in the suit. He was on the desk. Islam looked up, sees him. He goes, I see Chandler over there. What's he doing? Let's do it. Well, then Chandler responded. Chandler said, look, I might be a homer, but I think, I think wrestling beat Sambo. Now, that's interesting to me right there. Wrestling for sure beat Sambo, in my opinion, but I would find that very interesting. I don't know if I could pick an opponent that I'd rather see Islam fight more. It would be Chandler or Gaethje. In, in all fairness, Chandler and Gaethje, for me, in many ways, are the same guy, at least skill-wise. They're both all-American wrestlers. They've both got great hands. They both show up in shape. They're both tough as an old leather boot. I mean, in many ways, they're interchangeable. It seems as though Gaethje is not as excited about going out there and competing as Chandler is. Everything I hear from Chandler, and by the way, Chandler has never backed down before. Do not think in a million years Chandler's going to let that call out slide. The only way Chandler lets that slide is if he's already working on something. If something's already in the works, he could even have a contract already signed and it hasn't been announced. I and mean, I'm just sharing with you, in case you're wondering why Chandler didn't speak up a little bit more aggressively. If Chandler already is working on something and he's got his cannons facing in one direction, he's not going to switch gears for Islam who just fought, which means Islam's going to need a meaningful amount of time off longer than Chandler goes. I'm only sharing that for you because that's an interesting match. And the way Islam fights is so basic. I mean, his skills are so polished, and he is so incredibly advanced, but he is the least likely to hit you with a spinning wheel kick to the mouth and knock you out, like, say, Corey Sandhagen. He's the least likely to come out there in a side stance and start chopping at your knees and kicking you in the belly like, say, Wonder Boy or John Jones would do. I mean, he's very straightforward, much like Khabib. Hands up, chin down, I'm coming forward. I'm going to do two inches at a time. I'm going to gain two inches of ground at a time. I'm going to wait until your back is against the fence. I'm then going to grab you, take you to the ground, and you're never going to be the same. It's very workmanlike. It's very rinse and repeat. High level of conditioning. Right, Khabib did this too, but they weaponize pace. They understand that pace can be used as a weapon. Man, a lot of the things I just said is the same analysis I give you for Michael Chandler. And the idea that you're going to just go out and take Michael Chandler down, oh, and by the way, keep him there, oh, and by the way, do it again and again, you might get one on him. Course of a night, you might find your way on top, top twice, but to keep him there and to do it repeat, I mean, it would just show us something we've never seen before. I've never been more impressed with Khabib than Khabib's last fight. I did not know Khabib was that good. I knew he was great. I knew he was the champion of the world in the hardest event. I knew he was great. I did not know he was that good until he did what he did to Gaethje. Do you guys remember that fight? Remember when Khabib had the armbar? And it seemed as though he didn't try to finish it. Khabib came out after the fight and said, I was going to stretch his arm out. But then I remembered that I saw his mother earlier that week. The holidays are coming up. He's going to want to hug his mother. I didn't want to break his arm. Now, if anyone else said that, they're rewriting history. I think I saw it. I think I saw the point where Khabib let that armbar go. I only shared with you how impressed I was with Khabib's last performance. And I'm seeing a lot of Khabib in Islam. So while I'm sitting here and writing off that he couldn't do it, I don't think he can. I don't think he can just take Chandler down. I don't. I think it's going to be a different fight. He's going to have to show us some boxing. He's going to have to show us something else. That's what I think. But I don't know of a fight that I would rather see. And I'll just share for you. The only re If anybody thinks Chandler let that one go, the only reason Chandler might let that go for now is if he's already working on something else, which if that's the case, come on. Chandler's got the right to run his career, too. He doesn't need to stop just because somebody said his name.